Hello YouTube, welcome to the shop. Today I'm doing a review on the Eagle Industries Cyrus plate carrier. It currently comes in two different versions, the land version and the maritime version. Uh, this in front of us today is the land version and it's what I'm going to be doing a review on. If you want to see a review on the maritime version, I'll be doing one in the future, so keep an eye out for it. So what drew me to get the Eagle Industry Cyrus? Well, it's American made and American made tactical gear is some of the best. Um, some of the other Eagle Industries tactical gear I've owned is, is held up well. Um, the price and availability of this uh, vest currently is also attractive. So uh, you can get these between the new and used um, from anywhere between you know, 100 and 250 bucks which is pretty good considering the MSRP, MSRP originally on these was about 750 So as with most of the Eagle Industries gear, it comes with a lifetime guarantee. So that's good. And another reason I liked this carrier was for the BALCS soft armor that is accommodating this vest it is very versatile. So you could take the soft armor out of this vest and insert it into um, a, a covert carrier to be worn under your clothing and have that level 3A threat protection uh, and have it covert. And if you wanted plate protection, you could always just, you know, throw a, a basic simple plate carrier like this on top and have front and rear plates and get virtually the same protection as a full plate carrier like this with soft armor and hard armor. So I like the versatility of that. It allows you to react to different situations. So um, as far as plates goes, these can accept most commercial plates. As you probably already know, the SAPI plates, the military SAPI plates, are not legal for civilians to own. However, there are plates on the civilian market that can accommodate this vest. So uh, with that being said, you know, you've got your 10 by 12 and your 11 by 14 standard uh, armor plates in various cuts you know swimmers cut shooters cut uh, and even just your square or rectangle cut plate will fit in this size small and medium can accept the 10 by 12 size for the front and the rear and the large and extra large can accommodate the 11 by 14 in the front and the rear I feel like I feel like this vest could probably fit 11 by 14 if I really wanted to but I haven't tried it I've just got the uh, 10 by 12s so Additionally, it does not come with uh, side pouches, but you can purchase side plate pouches for hard armor for the sides. Um, and these can accommodate uh, six, uh, eight by six or six by eight hard plates for the sides, giving you uh, hard plate protection for the sides. So while we're on the topic of body armor, um, you, you may have run across this YouTube video. This may be your first body armor, your first ballistic armor purchase, your first plate carrier purchase. So I'm just going to hit some high points. There's a lot of information out there on the web. Um, so you, you feel free to do as much research as you can before you make your purchase. You don't have to just take my word for it. But um, what I'm going to tell you is based on a lot of factual information that's, that's out there. So body armor basics. Um, a good rule of thumb is to go with the highest threat level rating possible uh, for your budget or for you know your application. And what is uh, what is the threat level ratings? Well, they're determined by the NIJ or the National Institute of Justice. They're the ones that put a stamp of approval on body armor as far as what threat level they can uh, withstand. So for the purposes of this review, we'll start with level 3A, which is the soft armor inserts for these carriers. And 3A soft armor can stop up to 44 mag or equivalent, which encompasses a pretty wide range of, you know, uh, handgun rounds, pistol rounds, even some, some carbine rounds and, you know, probably shrapnel and stuff like that. So it's good. It's good all around protection. Um, level three is when you're getting up into your hard armor and your armor plates. They can stop most rifles except for armor piercing or M855 uh, ammunition. And then level four uh, is the highest level rated uh, hard plate armor available in the civilian market. 
and it can stop uh, armor piercing rounds like armor piercing 30-06, uh, armor piercing uh, M855. So that's that's excellent protection there. So steel armor, I'm going to touch a bit on that. Uh, I personally, am, right up front, I'm not a big fan of steel armor. So um, I'm probably going to trash talk steel armor a little bit. And if, if you already own steel armor, it'll mean hurt your feelings. But you know, facts are facts. Um, hopefully, I'm going to catch some guys who might be on the fence about you know. Oh wow, man! This this the steel armor, man, or you know, man, this composite armor is you know, a little bit more. But um, can, you know, this is a life-saving equipment, so it's not the type of equipment to just go cheap as you can. It's not the type of equipment to cheap out on at all, uh, because it is life-saving equipment. So, steel armor, you know, cost-wise, yeah, it's cheap. I mean, that's why I think it gets as much attention as it does, is it because it is cheap. Um, you know, there's a lot of media hype, a lot of promotion out there um, for the steel plate armor. A lot of different brands have emerged. Um, most of these started off being manufactured by steel target manufacturers, companies that made steel targets for ranges and shooting sports. And they, in order to uh, generate more revenue, they figured out, hey, we can cut these, we can cut these steel plates into the size and shape of armor plates and sell them to the public. And they'll be glad to sell you a piece of steel to put in your carrier. Don't do it. Um, so when you're looking at steel armor, you're thinking, okay, you said 3A, 3, and 4. What's this 3 plus I keep seeing? Well, 3 plus is not an NIJ rating. It's something that's, that's kind of been uh, invented by the uh, steel uh, plate companies that have just kind of made their own rating um, so they've hardened that steel a little bit more and say well you know it's not it can't it can't withstand level four threats level you know at all but um, it's it's it performs a little bit better than level three um, but I would not trust level three plus steel plates against any armor piercing 308 30 out six or m855 at all there's a lot of videos out there that just it just punches right through it. Um, and also a lot of uh, fly-by-night steel armor companies out there, their, their armor has failed to test time and time again, uh, and, and even being level three. So, you know, not a fan. I need to say I'm not a fan of it. So uh, another reason is, you know, the spalling produced by... Uh, rounds impacting those steel plates so the, the steel plate does nothing to um, to absorb the impact of that round as a matter of fact when that when the round hits if you watch in slow motion when it makes contact with the plate it begins to break up and splash and get pushed towards the outer edges of that plate towards the extremities towards your body your bite your your arms your shoulders especially your neck um, down into your gear for example might damage some of your magazines um, if you have them down there, uh, get down into your legs, and um, so that's it's not safe at all. It's almost it's it can be just as lethal as the round itself hitting you. So uh, the companies have produced a buildup, which costs extra in just about every case on steel plates. And the what the buildup does is it's supposed to be uh, like a spall blocker. I think that's actually a, 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 a brand name of one of the steel plate companies. Um, so basically all it is is like a rubbery compound. It's, um, uh, it's truck bed liner, I believe, that's just layered up in, in up to half an inch thick and on top of the armor, top of the steel. And what that's supposed to do is, is as the round passes through that buildup and strikes the steel plate, it, it's supposed to mitigate some of that breakup and some of that spalling from the round, okay? Um, however, it does severely damage and degrade that buildup, which is why, if you notice on some of the videos where they're doing demonstrations of, you know, for spalling, if you'll notice, you know, they only shoot it one time to show that, you know, no spall was released. You might get lucky and just not get any spalling from one shot, but for multiple strike capacity and more rounds coming into the area where that buildup has already been kind of blown away, um, not good. So uh, in order to try to, you know, go above that, you know, there's 
Kevlar pouches that are available that you can slide that plate in with the buildup into a Kevlar pouch and then you know put that into your vest but you know with steel not absorbing any of the impact it transfers all the energy from the front of the plate to the back of the plate right to your body so the likelihood of you know internal trauma uh, hemorrhaging or broken bones is very high with the steel plates just just because of that energy transfer okay um, and, and back face deformation so uh, they want to sell you trauma pads you're gonna need trauma pads to put behind there what are those it's it's a foam sheet you know some of them are like 3 8 inch thick mostly are, are, are fairly thin a lot of the guys I've talked to really have complained about the thickness of them they don't feel like it's adequate so they've been cutting up uh, you know that the gym floor matting which is about half an inch thick to put that on there and then that goes into your vest so what you're doing is you're creating this multi-layered uh, um, you know solution that each layer does something different it's you know kind of like the same concept as a composite plate um, so by the time you're all said and done getting the plate getting the build up getting the pouch getting the pad to try to get something that's going to perform as close to a you know ceramic or composite level four plate you really could have just bought the level four plate to begin with okay uh, when you're when you're talking cost wise so you're really not saving any money if you're going to do a steel plate and do it right and on top of that you know steel plates are heavy they're about 10 pounds a piece you know for the 10 by 12s and even more for the 11 by 14s by the time you add your side plates in um, you're you're looking at running around with over 30 pounds of steel in your carrier that's going to seriously degrade your uh, ability and diminish your ability to perform um, so you're talking about fatigue you're talking about a hindrance of certain activities so um, that's not good um, they're also loud I mean if you can you know if you've shot steel targets at the range even from distances hundreds of yards away you can still you can hear that clang when that round hits that steel target it is loud even at hundreds of yards away so you want to strap that to your chest and your back uh, not for me so th these are some of the reasons why the military and law enforcement when they look at when they look when they look at you know armor for their soldiers and for their officers is the reason why they don't go with steel armor as a choice they go with ceramic uh, composite plates they perform very well they can stop you know the majority of the lethal rounds that are going to be uh, thrown at them so um, time and time again ceramic ceramic plates out uh, perform steel so uh, anyway I'll get off my soapbox about steel armor and and body armor um, I encourage all you guys to you know, spend some time on the internet and you know do some researching on NIJ and and uh, steel versus composites and, and and make your own choice that works best for you so without further ado let's get into some of the details of this Eagle Industries Cyrus there's just a quick rundown on some of the gear that I've got on here we'll start at the top here just a you know basic admin panel and then I've got my uh, two mag pouches uh, for my pistol, for my, my Glock. And then uh, down here I've got four Eagle Industries uh, double mag pouches. These are, these are singles, which I kind of like. Uh, you can you know, move them around and have them in you know, various configurations of even or odd numbers. So I've got eight 30 round mags up front. And then I like to keep my, my workspace on the sides clear. So I've just got, right now, just put the, uh, the side plate pouches on there to show you. But I don't have any, any side plates for, for it yet. Um, and then we'll move around to the back here. All right, so on the back here, on my left side, I've got an IFAC that's uh, loaded with trauma and, and first aid. And then my bladder carrier, which I don't have a, my bladder in there right now. It's... Uh, uh, got clean is drying um, and then a uh, basic little kick pouch here which I've got some uh, my Leatherman tool some gun gun oil and um, so a few other basic tools and stuff like that so just real basic you know um, nothing too nothing too crazy while I got them down here let's take a look at how this uh, how this comes off and on here so here's that center panel 
you lift that up and you have access to to the cummerbund. It's got really good hook and loop on it. And then this flips up. And there's the internal cummerbund, which is, is quite comfortable. And that's how it comes off. The CYRAS, or Combat Integrated Releasable Armor System, is a modular protective vest designed for U.S. Special Operations Forces by Eagle Industries. The vest is currently the new full-spectrum battle equipment system and has replaced the FSBE AAVs. It features PALS webbing, making it MOLLE compatible and allowing the attachment of various pouches or accessories. Two versions of the vests are available known as the land and maritime versions. The vest consists of front and rear panels with pockets for BALCS or spear cut soft armor panels and standard issue sappy plates. This gives the wearer up to NIJ level 4 protection on the front and back and level 3A protection on the sides. On the lower rear side of the front of the vest there are two quick releasable buckles for attaching groin protection. The wearer's sides are covered by an external cummerbund which is also covered with PALS webbing. The vest body is constructed of 1000 denier Cordura nylon and the interior is lined with heavy duty mesh to aid in cooling the wearer. The difference between the land and maritime versions is how the outer cummerbund is attached at the front and where the quick release handle is located. Both come with an internal cummerbund which overlaps across the stomach and is secured with Velcro. On the land version, the external cummerbund wraps around and overlaps over the user's stomach and is secured under a single center flap rather than the two side flaps of the maritime version. The release handle on the land version is located on the left side of the front panel just above where the cummerbund wraps around and could also be mounted on the other side. This version breaks up the amount of continuous webbing on the user's front. The addition of side plates in side plate pouches can bring the vest to full level 4 protection for the entire torso, meaning the vest can stop rifle rounds from all sides instead of just front and back. Additionally, both the land and maritime versions can be fitted with extra coverage for the neck, biceps, deltoids, and as previously mentioned, the groin area. These inserts accommodate soft level 3A coverage except for the groin area which is supposed to accommodate a level 4 plate. Critiques of this VEX include its weight when fully loaded with plates and inserts, its lack of breathing due to its coverage, and difficulty donning the vest by oneself, which is a common attribute of just about any plate carrier with this amount of coverage. I myself have not had much trouble getting it off and on by myself. There are khaki, ranger green, olive drab, coyote, brown, UCP, and multicam color variations for the CYRAS. The United States Marine Corps Force Reconnaissance Operators use CYRAS, both land and maritime versions, during different missions. Why the quick release? In December of 1999, CH-46E Sea Knight helicopter crashed over the Pacific. Several members of 5th Platoon, 1st Force Reconnaissance Company drowned because they could not eject their heavy armor in enough time to swim away. Only one Marine was able to successfully ditch his equipment and survive. So here we're looking at the back of the carrier and you can see there is a drag handle here that is secured with Velcro. And then going down to the bottom of the carrier, this is the rear panel which behind there is the heart of the quick release system. Here we have the vest laid flat so you can see the front and back outside portions.
this here is the front of the vest you can see the pals webbing there the shoulder pads and shoulder straps back of the vest there's the cummerbund as you can see the external cummerbund also covered with the pals webbing moving back over here to the front of the vest this is the uh, front panel and we're going to take a look at the the front panel what's underneath that as you can see here there is the anchor point for the quick release and it's secured there look at how nice that's a really nice high quality hook and loop material there so this is the anchor point for the quick release the cable goes from the anchor into the carrier and that cable runs along the inside there when you assemble it you feed it through whichever way you want to have the pull on so if you, if you were to pull this out it would pull the cable from this channel right here running along the upper portion of the carrier inside that channel from there it feeds into the shoulder strap which is all one piece there and going along here to the back of the vest it drops down to the point in which all of these pieces intersect under this panel right here underneath the rear panel so the rear panel opens up just like the front panel first you unsnap the tab and then you would pull the panel open and there is the heart of the of the uh, quick release system all of the pieces of the vest intersect right here the two shoulder strap sections the two exterior cummerbund sections and the two interior cummerbund sections so when that cable gets pulled it pulls the cable through this feeder loop that is coming from the inside of the vest through all of the uh, layers so that white uh, feeder loop goes through all of those grommets. That slides out that way. The external cummerbund and the internal cummerbund both come out of the side as everything falls apart and away from your body. I do really like the fact that we have a lot of grommets here to work with on size adjustments for height and width there's quite a bit of adjustment in, in place here so the excess of the cable gets tucked into this channel right here you just slide it in there it keeps it in place close it back up and snap the tab in place The cummerbund there you can see is rigid. It's got a, a plastic insert that keeps the cummerbund rigid when it's around your body. It keeps it kind of from making contact with your sides. It's pretty comfortable. There's the shoulder pads that can be removed. It is a modular piece, so you can wear the, the carrier with or without the uh, fairly bulky shoulder pads there. Here's the inside of the carrier. This is the front piece here. You can see the heavy duty mesh there that allows for some breathing. You can also see the clips uh, on the inside. There's the uh, soft armor. So taking a look inside, when you open it up, you can see the clips that would connect the groin plate. There's the soft armor, and then if you lift that up, your hard plate slides into a pocket underneath there. Resecuring it with the hook and loop is fairly easy. Here's the loop material that is used to attach the other modular armor pieces. This is the back of the vest which is fairly identical to the front of the vest with opening up the velcro uh, attachments there and you can get access your body armor panels and plates.
Okay, guys. Well, that is my review on the uh, Eagle Industries Cyrus Land version plate carrier. Uh, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And stand by for my review on the Maritime version.